Welcome and hello. This is a video exercise in HECRAS. And in this exercise, I'm going to be dealing with loading USGS terrain data. That's going to involve loading a projection file and then obtaining USGS terrain data from a couple different sources, loading it into RAS Mapper and getting going with our project. All right, so to start, I'm going to start from the very beginning here. That begins with opening the HECRAS application and then going File, New Project, and then navigate to the directory that you want to save your HECRAS project in. Make sure to give it a title. So I'll just call this Exercise 30 and then click OK. All right. Yes, I want to use the US customary units. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on RAS Mapper, GIS Tools, RAS Mapper, and that opens up the RAS Mapper interface down below. To upload terrain data, we'll come down here to Terrain and then right click and then create new RAS terrain. So what it's telling me here is that I don't have a pro projection set. The project spatial reference system has not been set yet. Would I like to set it now? So if I click yes, it's going to take me to the options page where I can set that projection file, navigate to it, set it, and then I'm good to go. Otherwise, if I say no, what it does is it takes me to this new terrain layer. This is where I can navigate to a particular terrain layer, a USGS GeoTIFF, for instance and then load it up without a coordinate reference system. I don't want to do that though, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. Also, what we're gonna be doing later in this lesson is right-click, download terrain data directly from USGS. So doing right-click and then USGS data. Oh, it's giving me this again. Yeah, so I don't have a pro projection set. So if I click no, this dialog box is still gonna open up, but it's completely disabled. Like there's everything's grayed out and disabled and there's nothing I can do here. Projection is needed for download web data, which makes sense. So let's go ahead and add a projection file. So I'll go options and then projection is the first menu item right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the folder icon and then navigate to my .prj file, my projection file. I have that right here. This is actually for Northern California, zone three, and that's actually not the correct location, but I'm going to demonstrate why this is important to get right, apply, and OK. All right, so I do have a projection set now. It's this one right here. Here's the well-known text. But on the screen, I don't have anything to look at or know where my project location is. So what I've done in the past to get, get a workaround around this, and there's probably other solutions as well, is I would go to the USGS webpage right here. This is nationalmap.gov slash downloader. And I'll leave a link to this page in the description of the video. And this is really easy to see. So this is the continental United States. And I could select any of these locations, zoom in, and then search for uh, terrain data, digital elevation model data. In fact, I'm going to select, uh, here's in Colorado, here's northern Colorado, maybe like right here, for instance. This river right here looks like a good one. So I'm going to click on elevation products in the, the left menu. I'm going to toggle off one arc second. I'll go with the one third arc second data and then disable two arc second. And then I'm looking for a geo tiff. So with the correct area identified, I'm going to click on this search products button. And that looks like there's two different panels that appeared. It looks like it splits by 25 in the uh, west side and the east side. So there's east, there's west. I'm going to click this download link TIFF. This is going to download the GeoTIFF to my computer's default download location, the browser's default download location. And uh, just wait for that to download. OK, so it looks like that completed downloading. I can go ahead and go back to my RAS mapper. Actually, what I want to do is navigate to my project directory, which is right here. And I'm going to just move this TIFF file into my project directory. Okay, so that moved over. Looks good. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. Now let's go ahead and load that data so I can add new RAS terrain and then navigate to the file. And this is it right here. It's the GeoTIFF. I also need to convert meters to feet on the vertical conversion. And it is 10 meter data, or it's one third arc second data, which is about 33 feet or 10 meters approximately and it's going to be moved into this terrain directory. But I don't want to just call it terrain.hdf. I actually want to specify the name of it. I'm just going to call it 10 meter data. Not exactly 10 meter data, but close enough. And then click Create. OK, so that GeoTIFF successfully imported. We'll go ahead and click Close. And look at that. Our projection is not right because this is Colorado. The projection was for California. 
And this is uh, just one pitfall to try to avoid and one of the lessons I'm trying to demonstrate in this exercise. And what we need to do instead is have a projection for the same location as our actual elevation data. Makes sense, right? Okay, so to do that, let's go ahead and go back up to set the projection. What we don't want is this right here. What we do want is a different projection file. Now, if you don't have a projection file for your location, go ahead and check out this spatialreference.org link that uh, brings us to this web page right here, spatialreference.org. And at least in the con continental United States, there's a number of different references that use this EPSG references, probably some in uh, Europe as well. Oh yeah, all over. Okay, and then uh, the quick way to do this is to search. So I could just search for Colorado and then OK. And then I have a bunch of records for Colorado, Southern Colorado, Central Colorado. I use this one over here, 26953, uses a NAT 83 for Northern Colorado. So I'll go ahead and click that. And what I have is the bounds on lat long, different counties. And then here's the well-known text I can use, as well as a map here that shows the extent. So if I zoom in a little bit, oops, that's too far. But I should be able to pan. Yeah, so we can see it's definitely the northern part of Colorado from the entire west to east boundaries of the state. And it even goes up to Wyoming a little bit. Actually, maybe not. Okay, yeah, I think it's, I think it's right on the state line. But then, yeah, the bottom half of the southern half of uh, Colorado and even the central doesn't really get that coverage. But from the border down to Denver, both east and west, it looks like we're covered. So let's go ahead and just copy that well-known text. This is the text itself that I'm going to save into a projection file, a .prj file. So there may be more elegant ways to do this, but I'm just going to go ahead and right-click, uh, select all, right-click, copy, and then go back to my project directory. And this is the project directory. I could probably create another directory that says terrain or projection files. But for uh, just getting this done, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to call this EPSG, move this over, 26, no, oops, okay, it stopped renaming, one second. Right click, rename, 26953, and then something like Northern Colorado. And it also needs to be a .prj file. And yes, I do want to change it. And now I want to open it, but I want to edit it with a text editor. All right, so here is the file I opened up. There's nothing there right now, but right click, paste. This is what I had on my clipboard. This is what I copied from that spatial reference website. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just save that. Let's move that back out of the way. And we have the file saved right here, a massive one kilobyte. Let's go back to RAS Mapper now. By the way, that spatial reference org is right here. Here's where we set our projection. I'll click on the open folder, navigate to the .prj file we just created. And here is my, pro my project directory. Right here is that projection that I just saved. So I'll go ahead and select that and then click apply and then click OK. Now, when I did that, I realized my terrain does not correct based on that projection. And if there's a way to actually update that on the fly, that'd be nice. And I'm not sure if there is or not. If if someone knows, go ahead and leave a link in the uh, let me know in the comments. But what I'm going to do just uh, to make this quick is to remove this particular layer, reload it now that I have the correct projection set. So let's go ahead and do that um, project. Create new RAS terrain. I'll navigate to that file. It's this one right here. And then again, I want to name it 10 MD. Oh, okay, so let's just delete that. I guess actually, I want to delete that HDF file and the the .drt file. Don't need that anymore. Okay, now I can name it what I want, which is the same thing as before. A 10 meter data and click save. You need to do the vertical conversion again and create. All right, so that finished up. I'm gonna click close here and boom, look at that. We have the projection in place and it looks correct with regard to the projection file. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here on the, um, is this the South Platte River? Whatever river this is right here that's flowing eastward, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and look at the resolution that we get with this 10 meter data or this one third arc second data. And as you can see, as we zoom into the riverbed here, it does get a little grainy because this is one every 33 feet. Now that I have my projection set and I have found the particular region or river in this case that I'm interested in, now I'm going to use the USGS download tools that are built into RAS Mapper to get a one meter resolution of this particular area. So say, for instance, this is the river that I'm interested in. I'm going to go ahead and just zoom to this area so that I can use this as sort of the cropping extents when I search for the one meter USGS tiles. 
right click download terrain data usgs um, if you don't want to do it that way you can also go up to project download data usgs terrain now this dialog box is enabled which we saw this earlier in the exercise video it was not enabled then we want to select current view that's the first option here and apparently the default value but there are other options and then I do want elevation models as well. The other option is the top Tobo map. And then I'm going to click on query products. Give that a moment. It's going to give me the results right here. So if I click on this checkbox for one meter, that'll filter out and only show me the results that have a one meter resolution. You can see down below here, we have some one third arc data, which is what we already have. So not interested in that, but here's one meter. Okay. It looks like there's four separate tiles, which is a little bit more than I want. I was expecting one or two. So I'm going to close this real quick. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer and then do the same thing. Download data, USGS, query products, and then select one meter. Okay, it's the same four as before. This uh, could take a while. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this one and hopefully this will work. It's going to download to the USGS directory. And let me go ahead and just click on my project folder. Yeah, so within my project, USGS looks good. And then click download. Okay, so the file downloaded, I'll click OK. Then I'm going to close this box. It shows me that it downloaded. I trust it. Let's go ahead and load that in and see what we get. So I'm gonna to go to right click, create new RAS terrain, navigate to that file we just downloaded. It's in this USGS directory. And here is the file, it's a GeoTIFF. I'm gonna go ahead and change the units. I believe it's in meters and I want feet. So we'll just go with that. And then for the file name, instead of just a generic terrain.hdf, I'm going to change this to one meter data.hdf and click save. Okay, click create. Now it's going to take a moment to import. Okay, so that imported just fine. It looks like it's in the same area. So if I toggle off, let's see, this is the 10 meter. Oh no, okay, it was a little bit over to the side. That's fine. Oh, it's just a very slender area. Okay, that's fine. It's good enough for what we're doing here. So if I zoom in on the one meter data that we just downloaded, this is one meter and then this is 10 meter. From this v zoom, it doesn't actually look too bad. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little further. All right, here's the 10 meter data. And now here is the one meter data. You can see that the one meter data has much more resolution. So once we go ahead and create a geometry and then link it to this terrain file, we have a lot more precision when it comes to sketching out our river lines, our bank lines, our cross sections, and then computing the hydraulic tables that are ultimately used for the 2D flow in HECRAS. Getting the project projection correct, as well as getting a um, accurate enough terrain data to link to your geometry file is one of the first steps and one of the most important steps in a 2D flow model in HECRAS. So this video may serve as a jumping off point or sort of an introduction to 2D flow, because after that I would create a geometry, define geometry parameters, and then do all the other things required to run a 2D flow model in Rubens. One of the main takeaways from this exercise is to first get the correct spatial reference uh, projection file into HECRAS. And then what I did was I went to this nationalmap.gov slash downloader page, found where in the continental United States I wanted to download a one third arc second or about 10 meter data. I loaded that into HECRAS, got this file. And then once it was loaded in, I could navigate into just the area of interest I wanted and then import this one meter data by using the downloader that's built into HECRAS.